It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in, because we're going to take a close look at the Faiho company that brought us this very strange looking HD video game plus Bluetooth LED speaker set. Yeah, so it's a combination of a Bluetooth speaker and a game console one. But let's talk about the Bluetooth specifications. So the Bluetooth is basically having a 4.0 connection plus HDR. So then we have like the exception range. I love how to say accept range. But basically you're having like around 10 meters. It's your typical like Bluetooth speakers or budget Bluetooth speakers. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm saying Bluetooth speakers are typical because most of them have like about 10 meters of range. And of course, and there no to be, that don't need to be any obstacles between the space, let's say the Bluetooth speaker and your phone, for example. The battery is in 2200 milliamp, playing time around 10 to 15 hours, and the charging time is up to 4 to 6 hours. So it's quite long, if you ask me. Here do have like a quick overview of the basically the Bluetooth speaker. So inside we're going to get ourselves a retro game system. I thought it's, I think it's such a cool thing that I made this. I just need to pack it up. But also the way how this thing looks. Because this thing looks like a Famicom Bluetooth speaker. Man, that's cool. That's like bringing modern technology into a retro cell. I can really appreciate it. So let's open it up. All right, so let's see what we're going to get inside the box itself. So it comes, of course, with the deluxe toilet paper manual. Is there any English in this bloody thing? Yeah, there is. So here it basically explains how everything works. And I must say it's really okay. And I mean, like, it's extended with explanation how everything works. And I mean, oh, including the freaking Bluetooth speaker, of course. So here we have, like, the speaker itself. And the first impression is, like, this thing is freaking heavy. And I must say, like, I personally really love it. Like, just the way how it looks. The handle is all made out of plastic, so if you accidentally drop this speaker, it's going to be broken. Absolutely. It's made of very thick plastic. But, yeah, we do have, like, a metal, let's say, at the front. Let's see if we do have, like, two speakers. Let's see if there are any information at the bottom. So, basically, this is the model number over here. And do use a special power, blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, there was no, I think there's no power supply, basically, with the device itself. But that's something we need to take looks loose in the box itself. But do we have like powering on off? Hear that? Okay. So we need to hold it a couple of seconds for basically powering on. Let's power on. Power on. Okay. <laughs> we can even. <laughs> I love it that she just talks in two languages. Okay, that's cool. I've never. Okay, so basically Quan Chi, that means like something like like powering off. Okay, we have learned something today. So let's take a close look at this bad boy later and let's see what we're going to get more inside the book because that's quite interesting. Okay, box number one and box number two. So we do get a box inside the box. Quality control. Yeah, I don't believe those things. Uh, let's see what is in box number one. We do have like the controller. No, this is the oh, very long micro USB cable. AV out, HDMI, and here we do have like the controllers, the wireless controllers. All right, so let's grab one of them. Oh, here says play two, so no, don't need to have this one. Need to have the other ones. Oh man, we're having like these old school Famicom color ones, but like the fat ones, like not the, like the slim down. No, we'll get the fatties, the fatty Famicons. All right, so let's try this and let's see how good the quality is. Oh. Wow, these things are absolutely not super comfortable because they are like too tiny. I personally don't like the NES controllers nowadays. As a child, they were like great, but oh, it clicks very cheaply, but an overall not bad. We do get like the rubberized select and start. Ah, we need new two AAA batteries. Do I have any singling around here? Yep, there we have. Yep, I have them. Woohoo! All right, so let's plug this thing already in and let's see if we can play some games. Is there an on off switch? No, there isn't. So this thing automatically powers on. Ah, here we can see. Seems we're working. Okay, so that is great. Let's plug it in. Also going to try out the Bluetooth functionality. But first, let's take a close look at the game system. Okay, so let's begin with the game system at the back. I think it's pretty damn cool. Simply because we do have like the old school AV out, so if you want to play on a CRT, HDMI out, we have an, even have an S-Pass ratio if needed, like say on a widescreen. Man, that's a tiny switch. We even have the option to add a Famicom game. This thing, it does have built-in games. Power, reset, two controller ports, and basically the 
this thing underneath is just for what I understand though for the Bluetooth functionality. So we can use an USB, but stuff like that. We're going to try that later. Let's power it on. I think we need to power on. And let's. Yeah, I know. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is power on the system, but I already noticed a problem. Now you're thinking, what is the problem? The HDMI function is broken. Yes, seriously, like absolutely ridiculous. So let's power it on. You can hear like it basically uses the speaker. You can hear there's music coming out of it, but there is no signal out. Even I was trying messing around with the switch over here. And also this switch but there is absolutely nothing. So yeah, that is a great start. But you know, like the Famicom system seems to be working. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the AV out. So let's try that first. All right guys, so the AV out seems to be working just fine. A Little bit of a bummer that we do have like HDMI functionality, but the bloody thing doesn't work. So I already have seen this game before for the people who missed it out. So let's show you, for example, Sky Zone. Look at this freaking happy face. The signal output is pretty damn bad, of course, because it's AV out. But yeah, okay, so let's try a cartridge itself just to see if the cartridge shot seems to be working. But the idea behind it is pretty damn cool. I wish they added like something like a multi-game system and not like just your old school 8-bit boring stuff. I do like 8-bit, don't get me wrong, I grew up with it, but we want to have more. All right, I must say like this speaker does sound pretty damn loud, but the image quality, it's not like it's supposed to be. Fuck. I must say the controller play very well. It's pretty amazing. Ooh. Let's go. Let's see what we can do with this. Oh yeah, recharge, baby. Do here on the sound effects. And maybe it does something very wrong with this device, simply because also the colors are completely like washed out and not looking like it's supposed to be. Let's try a different game. Okay, all the sound effects here that I know of. Oh yeah, baby! Maximum volume! Okay, so one thing is sure about this, absolutely the speaker in this thing is it's just great, I love it. But for a bit sound. But let's take a close look at some real music or better than copyright few music. Oh, I bought my camera again. So. Let's turn it off. Nanyang Mashi, yes, all right. All right, so let's plug in the stick itself. Okay. So this is basically how it works. You can choose between all of the function, pressing the M. You can pause over here. Volume, you need to hold it. There's a real good one for bass. Man, you can just feel some bass in this thing. But of course, if you're going to put them on the table, you don't feel anything. So when you listen to the quality, especially with this song, I'm quite surprised. Like I've heard a lot of these like, cheap action speakers here in the Netherlands, but this one sounds way better than those. But of course you're paying like maybe five times the money than your cheap typical Bluetooth speaker. Oh, it's really high pitched. Oh, this is absolutely like not a good one to listen to your Bluetooth speaker. This is one that requires a subwoofer.
Alright, so also have the SD card slots. I don't need to put. Alright, so let's see if we can put it in here. Alright. And what you can see, it works very well. I really love the SD function with these things or micro SD. You can just bring your favorite music with you. Okay, next one, let's try to connect with my phone because that I'm curious if that Bluetooth function also works. Let's power it on and let's see what happens. Power on, I see. Thank you. Okay, so the bloody freaking phone finally booted up. So let's turn on the Bluetooth function. Uh, let's see if we can even find it. There we have. All right, connect it. Bluetooth connected. All right, so well, let's see. Oh yeah. So but it's, it's kind of funny, so the Famicom player or Famicom system uh, it's just a full functioning Bluetooth stick with everything, USB, SD card and including Bluetooth functionality. And it doesn't sound that crazy. So when it comes to the Bluetooth functionality, absolutely like it for a cheap speaker. Don't, don't absolutely compare this with a GBL or like a higher, let's say, quality brand. It's a little bit beneath, let's like, better say like between like the cheaper speakers and the GBL. That's basically where it belongs. And you're paying a lot of more for it because there isn't a Famicom player inside. Or mine, there is a Famicom, but the freaking HDMI doesn't even work. So another thing that was kind of weird. So you do have this tiny button. It seems to be this is for the light of future, but... When you're looking at the picture, it shows that it basically needs to have LEDs around here, but it only has a basic, you know, like, light up feature and bottom row, and that's the only thing. Yeah, nothing happens, there's no way of changing it out, or like, let's say, flickering with the bead, nothing at all. So yeah. <laughs> it's time for some rip and tear wicked way. I just wanted to see what is inside just to see how they also made this. I'm really curious. Whoa, okay, they are losing some very big, big, very huge parkers with an emboss. All right, so let's remove this one. There goes my warranty. Who gives a shit? Because the display thing doesn't even work properly because the HDMI doesn't work. Yep. Now we don't have any warranty left. Okay, and then there's the question, can I lift this up or how does this work? All right, so this is interesting. All oh, right, it's really interesting. All right, so basically how this works is that we do have like two gigantic speakers or gigantic, you know, they're like having gigantic magnets for tiny speakers. Let's give it that. But I don't know what is exactly say. Can I hear it is 4 ohms, 5 watts. That's basically what the speakers are. So they just implemented the freaking batteries like this. Your typical battery we've seen many times before. And I mean like we have seen these things with your portable PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, stuff like that. All right, so everything has been like connected to the inside. So we also need to open up this because there's nothing in here. Like there is just some PCB that has a connection at the top, the two speakers, and that's it. So. We do need to do some more rip and tear. Let's see if having the right screwdriver here. Yep, there we go. That is number one. That is number two. Now I'm even more curious, like how this thing looks. All right. And there we have all the four, all the same screw, so I cannot mix them up. Do we have all of them or are there still a couple of them over there? I got all of them. All right, so also they just pasted or glued the freaking batteries here. I'm going to leave them like this. 
So the way how they made it, like they just did it like this. Okay. All right. So let's lift it up. And basically, what I understand of this is this this piece be over here that connects the two speaker, but also just basically like have everything going on for the Bluetooth part and the audio. So another thing is like, let's move this ribbon cable. So here at the bottom part, this is the 2.4 gigahertz for your controller because it's connected over here. This PCB is for your cartridge slot and over here at the back, we barely can see it, but I'm guessing this is the main board for the Famicom. So for having a lot of stuff inside the machine like this, they made it very tiny and portable. It would be great to see one that works with HDMI and has like some built-in multi-retro emulation machine. That would be pretty damn awesome. All right, guys. So this is what we're going to get. I must say that I must give them some extra wicked kudos for bringing something completely, let's say, interesting to the market and new. I do like a lot of products from AliExpress, but this particular one I was really excited to review. Unfortunately, my HDMI function doesn't work. That's a little bit of a bummer. I personally really enjoyed making this video and I hope you really enjoyed watching this. Don't forget to give this video a like if you did. If you didn't like it, yeah, you can always give it a thumbs down. But thank you for watching, consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you next video. So hit that little bell, and then again, it would be great to see you in the next video.